a photographers. It's always nice to see a bunch of smiling faces hoping to increase their understanding and improve their photography skills. Uh, let me start today's class with a trivia question. What does the acronym APS-C stand for? And which company developed this size? Well, let's not always see the same hands. <laughs> we'll do the answer at the end. Uh, photography is full of puzzles. And you asked about some of those on your registration cards. For example, Soren wanted to know why some cameras have PASM dials and some don't. Fair question. That's a good starting point for a discussion about exposure. Now, it's not a brand thing. Here's the Fujifilm X-A5 PASM dial. And here's the Fujifilm X-H1. No PASM dial. Lots of other dials, though. In the back? Uh, yes, exactly. What's up with that? <laughs> Would you be a better photographer if your camera didn't have a PASM dial? Is your camera more capable or more pro if it does or if it doesn't have a dial? Uh, just to bring everybody up to speed, PASM is an acronym for a camera's main exposure modes, program, aperture, shutter, and manual. Some cameras substitute T or TV for shutter. That stands for time value, but it still signifies the shutter duration. Now, the last one, manual, is the camera's most basic mode, bypassing all of the computerized automated features for exposure. You set the exposure by selecting the shutter speed and the aperture opening. However, in 2019, many cameras have an auto ISO feature. For a full manual exposure setting, you'll have to take control of that too, and that's usually a menu option, not a dial thing. Now, P, A, and S, the other three modes, use the camera's computer to assess the amount of light in the scene, using the meter mode that you've selected to judge which area or how much of the scene to measure. Now, in P, program mode, the camera's computer sets both the shutter speed and the aperture to properly expose the image. Vincent? Uh, no, no. P doesn't mean portrait. Program. Fully automated exposure. But many cameras have an override, usually called program shift, to select alternate combinations, which provide the same exposure result. For example, if you're using P and you see that moving objects are blurred, the shutter speed is too slow. A program shift may provide a faster shutter, or for a softer background in a portrait, you may shift to a smaller f-stop. f-stop is how the aperture is measured and set. f4 is a large aperture, f2.8 is even larger for an even blurrier background. And I've just let you in on the two biggest secrets of photography. You use the shutter speed to blur or freeze the action. You use the aperture to blur or sharpen the background. Uh, these are the powerful exposure tools that help you tell your story. Now, with the A setting, you set the exposure. The camera's computer sets the shutter speed. Again, according to your selected meter setting. Now with S, you set the shutter speed. The camera sets the aperture. Yes, uh, that's a good question. Why don't all cameras have a PASM or PADM dial? Isn't it needed? Okay, but instead, let's ask, why do we need the PASM dial? If I start adjusting the aperture, can't the camera just know that? and let me have manual control of the f-stop while it continues to control the shutter speed? Or vice versa, when I change the shutter setting, why doesn't it let me control that while it sets the appropriate aperture? Why do I have to tell it what I want to control using the PASM dial and then use another dial to select the setting? And that's what cameras that don't have PASM dials do. The shutter speed dial on the X-H1 has an A position for auto. If I select any other setting, I've effectively switched the camera to shutter mode. And then, when I use the ring on the lens to select the aperture, and I'm manually controlling both, it's the equivalent of manual mode. 
Uh, you may not agree, but I find that simpler. However, that approach does require a dedicated physical control for the shutter speed and an aperture ring on the lens, and both of those controls need to have an auto position. Now, is that clear? Yeah, questions? Yes? Uh, right, the meter. Now, each camera has slightly different names, but generally there's one meter setting that covers the whole scene. Now, that may be called matrix, multi, or evaluative. And then there's usually a setting called center weighted, which gives exposure preference to the center of the scene. And many cameras have a spot meter, and that works best when it can be combined with the focus spot. Well, if you're not happy with your camera's computer's exposure setting, changing the meter setting may help. Now, on the other hand, it may be easier to make an adjustment to the exposure compensation dial to make the scene brighter or darker. But remember, exposure compensation's dark secret. It's not a magic fourth exposure setting. When you change the exposure compensation based on your other settings, it's changing the aperture, the shutter, and or the ISO. Now, in shutter mode, it changes the aperture. In aperture mode, it changes the shutter. And in manual, if it works at all, it's changing the ISO. Yeah, hands in the yellow shirt. Yeah, excellent question. Auto ISO. When you use the auto ISO, and depending on your camera, it may not work with all of the modes. The camera's computer sets the ISO. Now, most cameras allow you to configure the range. And before you do that, you should determine your tolerance for the camera's highest settings. If you think certain high ISO settings look like a noisy mess, set the high limit to one that you can tolerate. Now, typically, when a scene is dark and you're in P mode with auto ISO, the camera first opens the aperture, then it slows the shutter speed, and finally, it increases the ISO until it has enough light. Now, sometimes there's a setting for the lowest shutter speed in P or A mode, then when the shutter speed reaches that lower limit, the auto ISO starts to increase the ISO. Yes? All good? Thanks. Now, remember, no one cares which mode of, cam of your camera you use or whether you have a PASM dial or not. They care about your image. And your job is to capture emotion, to tell a story, to help us see the world through your eyes. I don't care if you or your camera handles the technical details. If you're happy with the camera settings, that's great. But if not, I do expect you to take charge using the appropriate tools. Whether you prefer to use the PASM settings or not is up to you. Now, before you go, here's the answer to the trivia question. APS-C stands for Advanced Photo System Classic. It was developed by the Eastman Kodak Company. Now, a special shout out to anyone who comments with any of the brand names used by the film manufacturers in the 1990s to market this size of film. And then for all of you, remember to keep shooting until your memory card is full and your battery is empty. If you have questions or comments, I enjoy interacting with you. So post your relevant questions and civil comments below. Now, if you are a subscriber to my YouTube channel, thanks again. And if you're not, please join us.